to this um, special meeting um, of the Committee on World Food Security. I'm extremely happy to see each and all of you, um, but I'm even more happy to say thank you to WFP for the hospitality and the opportunity to visit your um, space uh, as a CFS and to um, have you as a host for this, uh, this event. I'm very happy to first give the floor to Jim Harvey, the Chief of Staff, WFP of WFP. Some of us still know you in your uh, former responsibility, but um, many of us, most of us know you in your current responsibility, mm -hmm. and you're doing a great job. And I'm happy to give you the floor for some opening remarks. Um, Kurta, thank you so much for that. And um, I've, I've got the really easy job this morning. I, I'm, it's my job just to welcome you here to WFP. So uh, um, th all the rest of you are going to do the work this morning, and I'm going to sit back afterwards and enjoy the conversation. Um, I, I see that, uh, Gerda, you, you, you welcomed. You know, my original note said the usual sort of thing, excellences, ladies and gentlemen. And everyone knows I don't start meetings like that. So I'm going to follow on your, your uh, friends and say, friends, Romans, and colleagues. Um, <laughs> welcome to WFP this morning, and we're, we're absolutely delighted to, to host uh, this event because the, the, the CFS is something that, that all, all of us share here in Rome, and it's great that WFP now has this opportunity to, 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 to host this event and uh, to show that we're really part of this. So, um, it's my great pleasure to welcome you here um, for this information session. The purpose of the session is to look ahead at the agenda for the next, uh, for the 42nd sec uh, session of the CFS next month. Um, this is the first time um, that WFP has had the honor of hosting the CFS information session. Um, now, whilst the CFS has its, has its home, if you like, in inverted commas, in our sister agency, FAO, uh, we're very pleased to host it ourselves and get the chance uh, for my colleagues here and staff in the organization, there are quite a few WFP staff members in the audience, to actually get a, 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 a bit more of an insight into, into how the CFS processes work. Um, and also to get a, a preview uh, for colleagues in the building of, of the upcoming sessions. So it's, it's, for us, this is a very useful thing as well as part of our contribution to the, the, um, the, the CFS. Um, FAO, IFAD, and WFP equally contribute uh, significant funding, staff, and technical support to the CFS. And I think this really, we see this as embodying the spirit of, of Rome-based agency collaboration. There are lots of ways that this shows itself from country level, which is particularly important, up through the, the various, uh, uh, through, through to work at the regions and work in Rome. But I think that, that our shared collaboration and support in the CFS is, is, is one of the pillars of, of that uh, collaboration. Um, and the fact that, um, and I'd like to just thank the, I know that in each, in each of the uh, agencies, there's a, there's a unit that's who are working together. We have Mihoko here who leads our efforts, but we have, she has counterparts I know in the other two organizations, and I'd like to thank the whole team for their work in, in making this happen and, and getting, this to, getting us to this point. Um, the fact that the CFS is the only body which fully and regularly addresses matters vital to food security is, we see it as part of the return on, or the major return on our agency investment in this process. So, just very briefly, why does the CFS matter to us? Um, in WFP, I think, along with just everybody in this room and everybody who cares about universal food security and nutrition security, or zero hunger, if you want to use that uh, language. Um, we're, we're on the threshold of a really great moment in that dialogue. And that is that in 10 days' time, we'll have the adoption at the UN General Assembly of the world's new sustainable development goals. And of course, the second goal, SDG2, is in a sense our Rome-based agency um, Goal. I don't think anyone will appreciate us for claiming it to be totally our, but from the point of view of, of all the work that we do here, I think we think of it as our, as our goal. Because it sets out the expectations and the roadmap for achieving food security, nutrition, sustainable agriculture, and rural poverty eradication by 2030. 
And I'm told in New York that the, 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 the language now is to talk about Agenda 2030. We're not, we don't talk about SDGs anymore, it's Agenda 2030. It's a very powerful agenda. And I think also we, we have to believe, we do believe, and we have to believe, and I'm sure all of us feel that, that SDG 2 is achievable. But it's only going to be achievable if we really all work together with our partners, and I'm speaking now as an agency person here rather than a collective, um, with our partners, most of whom are involved in the CFS, the important people that we need to interact with at this level. You're all in the room, and uh, it's really important that we, we work not just as three agencies together, but with everybody here. The CFS is the world's foremost inclusive international and intergovernmental multi-stakeholder platform. That's quite a mouthful, actually, isn't it? <laughs> I got through it, though, <laughs> on food security and nutrition. Um, the CFS can, as our executive director said in a recent letter that she wrote out to all our country directors, uh, with all of our support, make a profound difference to these agendas at policy and especially, and importantly, at field level and at operational level. So, in conclusion, it just remains on behalf of WFP and all of my colleagues here in the building, many of whom will be listening in. This is going to be broadcast through our own internal system and uh, there'll be not quite a number of colleagues in the building who've got it on there in a little window on their computers watching what's going on. So there's a lot of participation in this from WFP that you can't actually see. Anyway, on behalf of all of us, and particularly on the team who've been working with everybody to, to help organize this, um, I wish you a very useful and fruitful conversation this morning. And we also hope, of course, that CFS 42 next month will set us firmly on the road towards achieving zero hunger. Kyoto, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim, and again for hosting us, and thank you, WFP, not only for the good contribution you um, deliver both in the CFS advisory group, but also in between uh, sessions and for your technical uh, and financial <coughs> support. And having said this for uh, WFP, it's also the case, as you already said, Jim, it's also the case for the, for the other uh, two Rome-based agencies. But normally, we are uh, working in the, uh, in the venue of, uh, of FAO, so it's, uh, it's very good to, to, to be here today. And so I would um, underscore your warm words of, uh, of welcome. Um, the beauty of these kind of meetings is that uh, Jim was the first to speak and to say a few words of welcome. And the charm is that he uh, is already grazing the grass. I don't know whether it is a, a saying in, in English, but in the Netherlands we have the saying, he already uh, was grazing the grass uh, I would like to, uh, to uh, touch on. But um, it's not a problem. Um, I will uh, do a little bit more improvisation. Um, this is an opportunity um, for us, for me as chair, but also for the uh, secretary, not only to give a preview on um, uh, CFS and to uh, elaborate already a bit on how we try to, will try to manage and to uh, reach the sound result we are all looking forward uh, to. This is also an opportunity to have a kind of exchange. Where are we? Um, what do you think is going well? Where do you have su to, uh, some suggestions to even improve our uh, way of working? Because what we are doing in CFS as the most inclusive uh, platform um, uh, for food, food security and nutrition and related uh, uh, topics, um, we are making progress, as I like, as I, I, I very often uh, state, but we are learning. We are learning by doing. Now, where are we? I'm, I'm the outgoing chair, because um, after CFS uh, 42, I won't be a uh, chair anymore. I, will have a, 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 I have, will have a successor, and there will be a new bureau. But when I um, was a candidate for this position, um, I was very much interested, not only because I'm a Dutch woman and uh, the Netherlands uh, being for one third below sea level. I don't know whether you have been visiting uh, the Netherlands. Have you ever been in Amsterdam? Then you know that the Netherlands is for one third uh, below sea level. So if my ancestors, ancestors 
wouldn't have worked together in a multi-stakeholder way. I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have made it to CFS chair. So that's why I say, um, I used to say, uh, multi-stakeholder is a way, not a very fast way, um, very often, because you have to bring the stakeholders to the table. You have to agree upon the problem. You have to agree upon finding a common solution. And then you have to start to build consensus, not only consensus on paper, but a consensus that can be brought to grassroots and can be implemented. Not, of course, as a, as a, um, a one-size-fits-all, but as a guide. Um, and for that reason, we have very often uh, guidelines or principles that can be explained, um, made applicable, and implemented according to the situation at grassroots. That is what we are, um, are looking at and are focusing at. What we uh, uh, like to do as CFS is to add value. And having said this, um, we are building on the capacity and the technical know-how and the concrete, uh, also financial support of the Rome-based agencies. Um, when I entered the stage of uh, CFS, I said, I would like to see Rome as the green hub within the uh, UN family. And as Jim already said, um, we are working on this because there is the uh, acknowledgement in, the, in New York, in the UN, that CFS can play um, a special role. Uh, and thinking about not only the decision making on the Sustainable Development Goal, or um, as Jim uh, rightly uh, uh, said, it's Agenda 2030, there is the acknowledgement that only in collaboration and cooperation, the uh, sustainable development goals can be reached and that no one will be left behind. And a lot of people are looking at CFS and the way we as CFS are trying to make uh, uh, progress and to, uh, to reach consensus and come forward with the best uh, products we can. They are looking at the CFS model with our uh, civil society mechanism and a private uh, sector mechanism and bringing to the table all the other stakeholders. What can we learn from you? Because, um, of course, this is the uh, CFS 42, um, but we are acting the way we act in a real multi-stakeholder uh, way only since our reform in 29. So we are still young, but we are dynamic, we are energetic, we have already proved that we can bring results to the table. Think about the voluntary guidelines on the governance of tenure to land, tenure to land uh, fisheries and forests. Um, FAO, together with other uh, partners, are impl is implementing uh, the voluntary guidelines. And they are implementing the voluntary guidelines already in 30 countries. It is, well, it differs, of course, in some countries it is almost, the implementation is al almost uh, uh, done. In other countries it's work in progress. But you see it is making a difference. Because as everybody understands, if a farmer, if he or she is not sure that she or he can harvest what has been sowed, why would she or he start to invest in growing crops? So that's understandable, and uh, that is where food security starts. We all know the interlinkage between sustainable food security and nutrition and sustainable peace. We all know or, and are aware about the interlinkage between poverty eradication and hunger eradication. All the interlinkages are there. And the awareness of not having only their, uh, um, the government to look at or blaming private sector, multinationals, only looking at civil society organization or letting people get or keep the feeling that they, that they have to do it on their, their own. Um, the recognition is there only when you bring the different stakeholders to the table, you can make progress. It is time consuming, it's sometimes very difficult and a lot of people here in this room today uh, we're also in the room when we were negotiated the right principles, the principles on responsible investments in agriculture and food systems. 
uh, a lot of you were also there when we had the negotiations on the framework for action for food security and nutrition in protracted crisis, so you know how uh, the temper can be uh, in the negotiations, but in the end, we are all aware that we are responsible, co-responsible to build consensus, to build consensus in order to support people at grassroots. Well, having said this, I'm extremely happy the way we are developing. Um, I'm extremely um, grateful for the recognition, the growing recognition for the work of, uh, of CFS. I'm um, also extremely happy with the support of uh, uh, the Rome-based agencies um, here because it is really something that um, you, you developed uh, the support in a very clear and strong way uh, uh, the, the, the last years. We really hope that you will continue, but as you said, you uh, intend to be a strong supporter and contributor and part of, uh, of CFS as WFP, uh, IFAD and uh, FAO. Uh, but I also think that we, as we are sitting here, we have to continue to invest because we are never there. We're making progress, but there's still a lot of work ahead. So let us focus and uh, let us focus on three things. Let us focus on these topics where CFS really can add value. And don't bring to the agenda your hobby horses. Of course, you can try, but don't bring your hobby, hobby horses. But think about the topics where multi-stakeholder platform like CFS can really make a difference. Be focused. Don't take too much work on our shoulders as CFS because we can overload ourselves. And when we overload ourselves, it's not only hard to manage all the work, but it can uh, cause um, it can lead to less quality of the products and the impact of uh, CFS. And uh, my last uh, final uh, point is take good care that you not only have an ambitious uh, agenda, of course you should be an uh, ambitious, you should have an ambitious agenda, but keep it manageable, both for CFS members, bureau members, advisory uh, uh, group, Rome-based agencies, other participants, but also for the Secretariat and when it comes to uh, funding of CFS activities. Because we don't need to make profit, but we have to manage the mechanisms, not only uh, the CFS Secretariat work, not only the organizing thing, but we are also uh, responsible for funding the HLPE, the High Level Panel of Experts, and their excellent uh, reports this year we have the uh, report on water for food security and nutrition. Next year we will have um, uh, agriculture, for food, agriculture including uh, livestock for food security and, uh, and nutrition. And we will continue with our excellent uh, high level panel of experts. But it all has to be funded. We don't need to have an overload of funding, but we need a proper funding so that we can start, we can continue and we can, can um, deliver concrete results. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I didn't uh, uh, do the time management uh, this time, but this was what I'd like to say to you as opening remarks. And I am happy to give the floor to the secretary of uh, the CFS. And by the way, this brings me uh, to uh, one thing. Um, having Deborah Fulton next to me, um, for, for many of you, uh, it looks already familiar, but she only entered the stage less than one year ago. When she arrived as a, a full-time secretary, as a successor of uh, Kostas Stamoulis, who did a great job, but he had to keep different balls into the uh, air. I think he could only uh, officially devote 25% of his uh, uh, available time to uh, CFS. I think it was much more what he did in practice, uh, but he didn't sleep uh, during that period. Uh, he was very much uh, committed, but Deborah, uh, um, um, well, stepped into the, the office about one year ago, just one week before CFS 41. So she had to manage uh, CFS uh, 41. It was good. She just jumped into the uh, water and she was able to uh, swim. Uh, she is running the secretariat with a lot of very motivated 
uh, and, and very good uh, uh, people, you know them, but I would like to ask you, give her a big hand, her and her team. So this is uh, not only because you're doing a good job during the uh, year, but also because we count on you and your team to run CFS 42. And you have the floor to uh, elaborate and explain us how you intend to do this. Okay. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair, and um, thank you also, Jim, for, for your words. Good morning, everybody. It's, it is great to be here at WFP um, having this pre pre-plenary session session. I was actually at the equivalent session last year in FAO before I'd taken on the position of secretary but in anticipation of taking it on. So I was uh, in the room for this last year and, and a little bit overwhelmed and I uh, had a vague idea of what was going on but not really very much of one. So let's see if that's advanced <laughs> in, in the last period. Um, uh, I'm going to just uh, use a presentation to, to run through the some of the key areas of work CFS plans to take on over the next couple of years and to run through some, some highlights of the session. I think we've heard a bit this morning already from uh, both the Chair and the Chief of Staff around what makes CFS unique, but it, it really is this multi-stakeholder nature of it, which uh, it, it's the trademark of CFS really that, that distinguishes it from other intergovernmental UN bodies, and it's really a recognition that to, to end hunger and achieve food security and nutrition, it, it's not the, just the role of governments, it's really the role of everybody and everybody needs to, to be in those debates. Um, the, the thing that I think also distinguishes CFS is the way it brings knowledge into its debates, the way it uses the high-level panel of experts to have evidence base of uh, underpinning its discussions and also the technical input from the three Rome-based agencies. So that really means that the starting point for the discussions in CFS are evidence-based, they're solidly backed, and then we, we launch it open to a, a broad multi-stakeholder debate that can be... Uh, hard one but ultimately results in a very broad consensus among stakeholders on, on, on what we're working on. So this is really what we think makes um, this body different and, and worth investing in. Um, the, what we're going to be doing over the next couple of years is a bit of a combination of tackling some new topics and then also focusing on some, some continued improvement in, in ourselves. I'll talk about the new topics in a, in a moment but I did want to just mention the this focus on continuous improvement that I think is quite interesting in, in CFS. We have regular updates of our global strategic framework where we incorporate uh, the new decisions of CFS into our work and we are also quite focused on on whether we're any good. <laughs> um, we, and we have an ongoing stream on monitoring ourselves and the effectiveness of CFS. This is uh, quite, a, uh, quite an intense process within the committee of looking at what people think it means to be effective in CFS and how we can do it. This year we launched a, a survey on CFS effectiveness, an opinion survey, so it was a, a relatively light exercise in some ways. We shouldn't make too much of it, but I think it was very interesting what we, what we heard back from that. I think the committee should be commended for taking on these sorts of uh, self-reflection exercises and I think the the signals we were getting from that were that we were very much as the the chair had said that we're we're making progress and we're in the right direction but we're not there yet and and we we have more to do it uh, we had quite interesting feedback on the the potential usefulness of CFS recommendations distinct from the actual usefulness at country level that, that gives us some, some uh, grounds for further reflection. And we hope to be able to build on that next year with an independent evaluation of CFS, which would be looking at its uh, effectiveness since its reform in 2009, which was, which was really quite groundbreaking. So this focus on uh, you know, looking at whether we, whether we are working well, what we can do better is, I think, one of the interesting things of the committee and also the way we, we bring in work that we have done in the past to try to add value to it and, and build on it, which we will be doing on some of the topics we talk about in the, in the next couple of years. Um, the, this, this year we've, sped, we've had a dedicated process really for the last two years, which has been very ably chaired by Italy. I can see Luca Frattini, the chair of um, the CFS open-ended working group on 
coming up with the, the new program of work for CFS. Uh, they've had quite an intense process deciding what we should be doing in 2016-17 and a couple of things have come out of that that I think potentially mark a, a turning point for, for CFS based on you know, really two major events in the international agenda. One is the, uh, conf the second international conference on nutrition last year where over 170 countries committed to combating malnutrition and the UN Secretary General has, has really said we all need to redouble our efforts and the CFS is planning to, to look at what kind of contribution it can make. Of course CFS has done a lot of work relevant to nutrition already but there is really a uh, an understanding that we need to think harder on that and, and step up our efforts. And of course the other major development is, as the Chief of Staff has mentioned, the forthcoming endorsement of Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda. This is also something CFS has been talking about for some time, thinking about what a body that, uh, as as the Chief of Staff has said, we really have a, the Rome-based agencies here and a committee here that's all about these issues on food security and nutrition, ending, um, ending hunger, and we have a, a global goal that's very well suited to us, and CFS has been talking for some time about what kind of contribution it, it, it can make in supporting the achievement of the 2030 Agenda and plans to endorse a dedicated work stream that will be really focusing on this, what it means for CFS, how CFS might need to reimagine itself to, to play the most constructive role possible. Then we also have uh, some thematic work streams that, that people have uh, asked us to look at that talk to either persistent challenges or uh, challenges we know about but that are really becoming more more urgent and uh, greater scale. And one of them is this one on urbanisation, rural transformation and the implications for food security and nutrition. So we know that by 2050 we'll have an estimated 70% of the world's total population living in urban areas. And we also know that one third of the world's population is already living in urban slums and this number could reach 2 billion by, by 2030. Uh, we, we can see that there are, uh, the, the speed of urbanisation is really reshaping the landscape of food systems and it's creating a number of challenges as well as potentially some, some opportunities. We know these challenges are very interlinked, they're multi-sectoral, they really uh, cross over a, a wide range of areas, they include tenure, access to water, food prices, health, nutrition, employment. Uh, they have impacts obviously on income inequalities, vulnerability and the, the committee's thinking that it, it really needs to have a look at uh, from the food security, and food security and nutrition perspective what, what this means. So there is the hope to have a, uh, a forum that will identify policy gaps and, and implications with a view to developing targeted recommendations by 2017. Then we'll also have uh, some ongoing work on smallholders. Smallholders is a topic that's never far from the CFS agenda. Uh, we, we know that they supply 70% of overall food production. We also know that they make up 75% of the rural poor. And really the, these challenges around how we can improve livelihoods, improve access to markets. Uh, they play an important role in, in their own food security and that of the communities and we, we, we haven't yet solved the challenges of how to create more opportunities and address rural, rural poverty and for CFS a focus on smallholders is, is, uh, is an enduring commitment. We've had a number of work, uh, areas of work in the past including uh, reports by the high level panel of experts uh, and policy recommendations that came out of that on smallholder sensitive investment. And then just this year in June, we had a high level forum on connecting smallholders to, to markets. And the committee's proposing that, that we continue with some follow up work on that, that really tries to move the debate forward. We've been discussing it for, for some time as CFS is looking at how it can really add value and address some of these persistent challenges. We know we have major data gaps in uh, what we know about informal markets and how they work, given that this is where smallholders are really focused. We, we looked in our high level forum at a range of cases and experience of others on how they'd uh, worked collectively through cooperatives to, 
to build their access. We know about the role that public procurement can play, the, the way we can partner with the private sector, uh, but we really want to think about what what the policy implications are of all this and, and how we can perhaps come up with some recommendations that can really start to, to shift us forward. So next year uh, at CFS 43, we hope to have some policy recommendations that could be endorsed that will strengthen smallholders' access. Then another topic, which uh, again CFS has talked about it in the past, but it's really a, an area where we have these persistent barriers. We, despite the, the overall commitment that everybody has, the recognition of the importance of uh, gender equality, thinking about the most vulnerable, we do have these uh, persistent barriers to, to women's empowerment. Uh, in, in agriculture, where we still have gender-specific constraints that reduce the access and opportunities and the productivity that, uh, of uh, women's contributions to production, growth and well-being of their families and communities. Uh, I think FAO has, has said in the past that if, uh, if women were given the same access to productive resources as men, they could increase yields on their farms by 20 to 30 per cent and they could raise agricultural outputs in developing countries by as much as 4%. And that, that has the potential to reduce the overall number of hung, hungry people in the world by up to 17%. So we, we're all committed to the importance of this, but we, we really haven't managed to uh, make the progress that we, that we want. So the committee is proposing to have a work stream that will identify policy gaps and good practices and look at why women and girls still represent the majority of the food insecure and, and what we can do in a multi-stakeholder way to come up with recommendations that can really look at what's missing, what's not working and why, and the outcomes of that work stream would be presented to CFS in 2017 at CFS 44. We will continue with the work of the high-level panel of experts. Uh, as we've said, they are really a major way of bringing in evidence-based uh, um, an evidence basis to the discussions that that CFS has. The, the chair has already mentioned that next year we will be discussing a report on sustainable agricultural development for food security and nutrition, including the role of livestock. And then in 2017, we will have a report on sustainable forestry for food security and nutrition. And then recently, in response to the, the uh, expectation that we will focus more on nutrition, uh, the group that Mr Frattini has been chairing has said we should also have a third report which is really looking at nutrition and food systems. Uh, these will all look at the, the state of knowledge on the issues, uh, what the policy implications are, uh, what the challenges are and really launch into CFS an evidence-based debate that will ultimately lead to policy recommendations on, on these topics. So these are all areas of work that we hope will be endorsed in the, the multi-year program of work which is presented to CFS at this year's plenary. As the, the chair mentioned in, in her remarks, it's all subject to resources being made available to, to achieve that. We do face a, a substantial funding gap at the moment between the support for the high-level panel of experts, the civil society mechanism and the, the support to deliver the, the work streams. Uh, but if we remain optimistic, as we so far are, we, we hope to be able to achieve this. And if any of you would like to talk further about funding, I'm very happy to answer, answer any questions about it. Um, to focus now on the, the session coming up in October, it's going to run from the 12th to the 15th. It'll be hosted as, as usual in, in FAO, and all of the sessions will be, will be webcast. All of the information for the session now is available on our website, so the timetable, the annotated agenda, the, the session documents um, are, are all there, I think. And then on the 16th of October, which is FAO's celebration of World Food Day, the Italian government is making it possible for CFS participants to travel to Milan to participate in World Food Day, which will be uh, celebrated in Milan at Expo this year. So I would like to run through some highlights of the session. Uh, the, 
the key achievement set for CFS this year, I think, is really this endorsement of the framework for action for food security and nutrition in protracted crises. This has been under development for, for some time, uh, I think since 2012, and it's really a response to the recognition that protracted crises require special attention and that appropriate responses in these circumstances differ from either short-term relief or, or other development contexts. And over a, a long and very hard one process, the, an open-ended working group within CFS managed to reach consensus on a set of 11 principles that can be used by all stakeholders to help ensure food security and nutrition for people who are living in protracted crises. So we hope to have the formal endorsement of that at CFS this year, and that will be a major achievement. And it really has only been possible with the uh, level of commitment and technical input coming from WFP, FAO, and, and also IFAD, it's, it's been a substantial commitment. Uh, Recognising that this is an achievement for us this year, we will also have a, a number of related events happening through the week. So there will be a, an event on Thursday uh, on building resilience, and this will be an opportunity to look at the combined resilience policy of the, of the Rome-based agencies and how that also represents a, a step toward concrete implementation of the framework for action. We will have a number of other side events uh, showcasing uh, work on protracted crises and resilience that build in IFPRI, the Rome-based agencies, civil society mechanism and a number of others. So there's, there's plenty on through the week that should be of, of interest on that. Then the other key theme for us this year at CFS is on youth. It's, there's a youth theme really running throughout the week and this uh, is really recognising that we have a very high proportion of young people living in developing countries where agriculture is a major employer, 60% of the labour force, and yet the majority of youth are not seeing this as a, as a viable uh, career path given the low productivity rates and, and the challenges and the difficulties they've seen generations face. So I think what we can see is that a future where, where young rural people are able to uh, reach their potential and contribute to a world where, where we've ended hunger is one that we would all like to see. And we have opted in CFS to, to have a discussion on the, the way we can engage youth, the, the, the barriers facing their, uh, their participation, the challenges and, and their own ideas for how to overcome them. So we will have on the Monday afternoon, early evening, a youth incubator event. We invited youth around the world to submit videos with uh, a three minute pitch of their idea on how they could uh, achieve, what, what their sort of transformative idea could be to, to achieve food security and nutrition. We received uh, 53 I think in the end and we have selected 10 youth to, to come to CFS and pitch their idea to a panel of inspiring leaders and they will uh, participate in a number of youth events going on through the week. We will also have a, an event on the Thursday which is more focused on the, on the policy side. We'll have a young moderator for that and uh, uh, another panel discussion where we can really focus more on policy implications that, that, that youth, of, of the challenges youth are facing. Uh, that will hear from private sector, civil society, uh, government, it would be quite an interactive session and we'll, we hope we'll have a strong youth contingent at that that will be able to give us their own views around uh, the... We think it could be quite interesting to hear what they, they see as the, the views and solutions distinct from what policymakers see as the, the challenges and, and solutions. Uh, these events have all been developed with the support of uh, FAO and IFAD and also the YPART, which is the Young Professionals for Agricultural Development. And there's a background document really drawing together different cases and examples. We have every year in CFS uh, a series of discussions on uh, how we can build coordination and linkages, um, which we look at the global, regional and national level uh, and take a different theme for, for discussions it's to help CFS connect with other initiatives, hear other views and really try to connect the policy and, and practice to, to some extent. We're trying to make these discussions as interactive as possible and we have three very inspiring keynote speakers to lead off discussions this year with Mary Robinson just, uh, leading us on a, on a global discussion on food security and nutrition in 
We've called it the post-2015 agenda, but we should be calling it the 2030 agenda now. Uh, we'll also be having a discussion at, on the, at the regional level on enhancing regional food supply systems and processes to improve nutrition. We have Jane Idu, the former chairman of the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition, leading off a, a keynote discussion on that. And then at the national level, where we're looking at national multi-stakeholder approaches to improve nutrition, uh, we will have Mary Mooby, who is known to some of you. She was formerly the amb ambassador here in Rome, and, and she's now the senior principal director in the office of the president and cabinet in Zimbabwe. We will have these as lively as possible and moderated uh, with uh, well, well-known moderators as well. Frank Cessno, a well-known uh, former CNN journalist and anchor and talk show host will be moderating two of the sessions and we hope we will have David Nabarro, who, who most of you know, moderating for us as well. And this is in response to some feedback uh, we had last year around how to make these sessions more lively, more interactive, so we're, we're doing our best. Then we will have a discussion on this year's high-level panel of experts report, which is on water for food security and nutrition. That will, uh, there's been some discussions going on already. The report was actually launched in May, so it's, it's not a, um, uh, a new topic for the committee to look at, but it will really be the time at, during plenary where the committee needs to knuckle down and agree on the policy recommendations that are going to come out of, of, of this report, and that will be uh, another highlight of the session. Almost finally, the, the next is the, uh, the state of food security in the world. We will have some time in plenary on this. We, we do always make time for discussion on this report. It's a, um, a flagship report and, and of key interest to CFS. I think what makes this discussion particularly interesting this year is that it'll be the last report focusing on monitoring the, the SDG targets and it will be a bit of a chance for the committee to provide their input into discussions on how this flagship report might evolve to, to become a key tool in the ongoing discussion around the 2030 agenda and, and monitoring pro progress. Then that is really the plenary session for you. We have running throughout the week a series of side events and an information marketplace. The side events this year we will have 36. We had very high interest, I think over 70 requests for, for side events. Uh, we were unable to accommodate all of them, but it's, it's great for us that there's this level of interest. We've really tried to focus on uh, multi-stakeholder and interactive side events around the themes of nutrition, uh, SDGs, youth and protracted crises, and there are a number of other themes within there as well, but we've tried to, to really create a bit of a sense of a theme running through the week. The side event table timetable is available on the, on the web page, and we will provide more detail with abstracts of the different events to help people navigate. But this is, uh, this, is, this is a great networking opportunity. Of course, we don't expect everybody will get to every side event. There will be summaries available, but it is a good way to, you know, to pick themes of interest and pursue them. Similarly, the information marketplace will be running all week and will be, um, uh, there will be people there to, to answer questions and talk about particular products that you're, you may be interested in. And then the, uh, there's a few housekeeping things I just wanted to mention. First of all is not housekeeping, but I did want to mention there'll be a reception on the Monday, on the Monday evening, which is hosted by the government of Italy. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that will be running after the Youth Idea Incubator event that we will be having. And then in addition to that, some actual housekeeping. We have a registration deadline for the session of 30 September. I think all of the information you really want to, to find will be available to you on the website, the registration there, um, the building passes to attend the session will be available to be picked up in advance, information on the website there. You could come in Thursday, Friday or Sunday for those. For any of you that have access to, uh, to the FAO building, the Rome-based agency staff, you can attend the, the session, but if you want to be listed on the list of participants, you should also register to attend the session to, to be shown on the ultimate delegates list. The seating plan will be, uh, it's a very large plenary that we, that we have uh, the meeting in. 
and we tend to try to group it so that we've got a sense of where the different constituencies are. So we have a centre block around the countries, uh, then we have the various constituencies, including the Rome based agencies around the, the room, so we, we can sort of see in blocks where people are. And as in previous sessions, we try to manage the, the participation and the interventions between the various constituencies. So. Uh, private sector, civil society, other participants can all intervene throughout the discussion. There's no need to be waiting in, in, until the end, but we try to just manage a, a balance between uh, the constituency's input. We ask for people to be brief and to the point. We try to keep discussions as interactive as possible. So we, we really discourage uh, set interventions to the extent that we, we can. We ask people to keep to two to three minutes to allow us to hear as much as possible and to be as uh, interactive as, as we can. And that is really the, what I wanted to say to you. Uh, I've got up here the website the, uh, where you can find the high-level panel of expert reports, where you can contact us, and the, our Twitter hashtag. What we uh, would like to do now is to hear from you any questions or comments, and also, as, as the chair was saying in her opening remarks, any other feedback you want to offer to us uh, how we can continually improve CFS. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. That was a lot of information. Very much concentrated. Although I'm an insider, I also learned something uh, new. Uh, but probably there are some topics you'd like to raise or something you'd like to focus or you have questions about. Please feel free. And at the same time, Jim um, uh, Harvey is leaving us, not because he's not interested uh, anymore, because I'm sure we will see you somewhere somehow at CFS 42, but he has other um, obligations, as I presume. Thank you very much Thank for you, joining us. Thank you so much. And for that reason, who would like to take the floor? And because we are innovative as... Um, um, I said already, and, and Deborah uh, underscored, CFS is innovative. I would like to, is there, is there a micro? Is there a, yes, it's fl flexible micro, yes. Sir, you have the floor. Please stand up so that also the camera can focus on you and also the people outside this room can follow your contribution or question or suggestion. You have the floor. Shukran. Thank you. Mrs. Chairman, I thank you for all your efforts. I thank you for all your efforts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank you for all your efforts during the past two years. And I wish you all success in managing this session. And I wish all success to the upcoming president as well. My question is not new. I have already asked it uh, to the chairman of this uh, uh, the, to the CFS. It is about uh, the uh, marginal uh, events. Uh, they are uh, really numerous, uh, the side events actually, and they are really in, uh, numerous and not everyone can uh, can uh, participate. Of course, uh, you might uh, answer that we can uh, we can participate in the main events, but. Uh, uh, actually, we are interested in uh, a lot of events and we cannot uh, attend all of them. And we, this is not a new problem and it has been discussed in several uh, uh, previous meetings. Uh, there are a lot of side events uh, and uh, this causes some kind of, uh, um, uh, some kind, uh, this, this actually affects our attention and our concentration. Uh, my second uh, question is, why uh, uh, you have limited uh, uh, the timetable to four days, although we have been uh, used to uh, having one week or more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me start to answer your question um, on, to start with your question on side events first. As our secretary already explained, we had over 70 
requests for organizing a side event. And let me tell you, those uh, organizations or countries uh, or agencies who um, got a slot for a side event are extremely happy. But those we had to disappoint are really disappointed. So this is a point that returns and will return, I, I, I promise, almost every year. And the big question is, and every year we have to consider, the Bureau has to consider afterwards and to give recommendations for organizing the next plenary session. Um, but this time, uh, again, we said, okay, let us try to um, allow or to organize as much as possible side events. And we are aware that not only small delegations, also the bigger delegation cannot manage to participate in each side event. But the side events are a place where new ideas can, can be brought to the table, where there can be done networking, where we can bring in people from outside who are extremely interested in becoming connected to CFS or to CFS work, and where we encourage more and more interaction. Um, and for that reason, to this year we have at least two innovative approaches. One is that we, uh, would al that we will allow only um, for 50% of the time slots there will be contributions from panelists, so uh, uh, introductions or uh, speeches or whatever, and for 50% of the time we uh, encourage interaction, discussion, etc. Because in the dialogue and in the discussion you can bring topics further um, and you can uh, try to get uh, people connected or uh, more interested in, in the ID. So this is a new uh, approach. The other thing is that we decided to allow, indeed, again, a lot of side events, but at the same time we requested the um, uh, organizers of the side event to come forward with a sound summary so that although you were that highlight that give the highlights of the of the side event so that for those who were not able to uh, join they can afterwards take note of the highlights of this side event so this is uh, something but I agree with you, it's not the first time you bring it to the table. Uh, it, will not be the first, it will not be the last time as well. Every year we have to balance, uh, but this is the approach for uh, this year. And to be honest, I'm very happy because what I learned in these two years is that CFS is becoming a kind of network, CFS plenary is a kind of uh, network uh, market. A lot of organizations make use of the CFS plenary, plenary in order to come to Roma uh, and not only to participate in CFS, um, in CFS plenary uh, and side events, but also to have the connection, have the opportunity to meet with others. So also the networking uh, aspect and bringing people together, uh, the people who are devoted and committed to end hunger and to uh, contribute to sustainable uh, agriculture and food security and nutrition, they um, are attracted to come to Rome. And this is building, of course, uh, to the, um, um, let's say, the recognition of Rome to be the green hub for food security and nutrition within the UN family and uh, worldwide. First um, question. Second um, question is um, why four days? Well, as Deborah um, uh, pointed out already, um, the 16th of October will be the, let's say, the Friday of our plenary uh, week. And it will be World Food Day, and World Food Day is the birthday of FAO. And that's the reason why it is called the World Food uh, Day within the UN. And FAO is celebrating its 70th, uh, uh, 70th anniversary, uh, which is something. And you should, should celebrate it. Well, the ID was brought to the table uh, one and a half year ago by, C by the CFS to make a combination of the Expo Milano and uh, World Food Day and to invite the Secretary General of the UN to um, introduce the implementation of Agenda uh, 
2030, the sustainable implementation of the sustainable development goals. So it's to create a win-win and to have a very special uh, uh, jubilee. Well, now, the uh, suggestion was uh, embraced by uh, FAO and uh, others, and for that reason, CFS decided to uh, try to finish our uh, normal agenda by Thursday um, afternoon or Thursday evening in order to uh, be able to join uh, the train that is provided by the, by the Italian uh, government to uh, go to Expo Milano and to um, co-celebrate the Jubilee, the 70th uh, anniversary of uh, FAO. That is why. And keep in mind that uh, normally, also last year, one part of a day was devoted to uh, World Food Day because last year, Thursday, it was uh, World Food Day was on Thursday, and then we had to clean our uh, CFS agenda for the morning session in order to have the special celebration of FAO. That is why. But for next year, no, for next year, we have a proposal, and for next year, we will uh, decide uh, when we will organize uh, CFS plenary and for how many days, and the proposal is to have full, uh, five full days again next year. Something to add? Nothing to add. Okay, next question, suggestion. Very nice if you introduce yourself. Uh, probably we know you, but uh, not every no, participant. You don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the new German ambassador to the UN. My name is Hendrik Tölken. I'm very happy to be here on my first day that I'm officially here in charge. And I'm very grateful for this excellent briefing. I think this is a wonderful occasion to learn more about the CFS. And I'm especially happy that you so efficiently led the way through the upcoming conference, so thank you very much. It's just one observation, or one remark, or one encouragement. Um, there was mentioning made of the 2030 agenda and goal two. And um, I come from a position previously where I dealt a lot with the SDGs and the post-2015 agenda, when it was, as it was called at that time. And I was just a bit concerned because there are some organizations who focus, that focus on one goal, saying, this is my goal, I'm really interested in this goal, number two. But they see a lot of merit that look in other goals as well, on water, on oceans, on biodiversity, on forests, because they're all interlinked to food security and nutrition. And I'm just trying to encourage you to have a very broad perspective on the 2030 agenda. Thank you. Thank you for this contribution, and welcome to uh, Roma. Um, I think you will have an interesting and inspiring time uh, here in, uh, in Roma. Um, and I only can emphasize what you have uh, said. Um, um, we as CFS, we are trying to break down silos and we are uh, embracing interlinkages, uh, cross-cutting issues, and this is especially the case when it comes to the implementation or, of Agenda 2030 or the Sustainable Development Goal. It's not about, it's not that we as, C as, as CFS only will focus on SDG uh, number two, dealing with food, uh, sustainable agriculture, nutrition, and related topics. It's also about mountains, water, about gender, about equality. Well, there are a lot of other uh, topics in other sustainable development uh, goals, and this is also the way we um, um, contribute it in New York, because you are coming from New York, but we all know that in New York several UN organizations and uh, country representatives are thinking about how to support the implementation at country uh, level, but also who, how to measure and how to do the stock taking and how to learn lessons, uh, etc. So this is the way uh, we are uh, looking at it. This is also, um, I presume, I think the way the open-ended working group will uh, look at it after the decision-making on CFS um, 42. But welcome to Rome. Right, who next? Merci. Uh, donc Serge.
Thank you very much. Serge Tomasi, I'll be speaking in French. I'm the permanent representative of France. I had a few questions or messages that I'd like to pass on on this session of the committee. The first is something that it will it will be going on within a particular context and we must therefore think about how we can give more visibility to the committee. And I would say that in the uh, RBA and in the uh, Roman platform for uh, food security. So for example, in the SDGs, just after the adoption in New York of this new agenda on development, it seems to me that we should show how the RBAs and the CFS can together be the major driver in the international community to address this particular uh, goal of eliminating hunger. And we should truly show the value added that the RBAs can bring to this idea with the cooperation among the three agencies and the work that CF the CFS carries out. On the uh, debate having to do with protracted crises, this is coming up at a time when we are in a particular international crisis now. We're seeing the enormous uh, crisis of the migrants as well as the collateral consequences that we're seeing in both in Europe and in other countries. So I think that we have to show the link here and to show that we're not just talking, that we can actually bring solutions to help to manage this crisis. I think also that we should show the uh, needs for the for financing that the WFP has and that if we are uh, helping the refugees in Syria in Iraq and in the, in the countries in the region that obviously will have some consequences for the countries in that region and will have a conse then consequences on the flow of uh, migrants we need to show through our policies as well that the RBAs and the CSA can be part of that solution. So the next message is the issue of the uh, how long-term the CSA is. Personally, uh, I personally think that this is excellent uh, work. Uh, we noted that in June the conference was 10 days long of the FAO and it could have been a little bit longer, we know. Um, and during the CFS uh, meeting I noted that uh, last year, we were a bit exhausted. But if we try and concentrate our debates in only four days, I think that could be positive and that we won't be completely exhausted. But the fifth day is very important. It's the World Food Day. And this is the FAO's birthday. The uh, Secretary General of the UN would be there. And uh, we're also talking about the Milan Expo. And so I hope that the CFS will be able to uh, present itself on that day and that it has the visibility that it deserves. And this is something that I wanted to uh, bring to you um, specifically, these messages. Thank you. You, um, Mr. Domasi, um, your neighbor asked for the micro and he got the micro and he is the ambassador of Italy. Sir, you have the floor. Merci, je suis tellement d'accord. Thank you. I am so much in agreement with my colleague and friend, uh, Serge Tomasi, that I will continue in French. And I am doing this so as to uh, join together uh, with our new colleague from Germany as well to emphasize one aspect that I feel to be extremely important. Uh, and it is linked to the paradigm change that we're seeing in Agenda 2030. 
because we will see this change not only in the area of development, but also in the more general uh, area of international relations. There is an enormous amount of reflection to be made here in Rome, and I would like to add here uh, to the definition of green hub, which was adopted by our uh, chairperson, but the def the definition of human security hub here in Rome as well. Thank you. Okay, let us try to um, to group uh, uh, a bit. Are there more people who'd like to take the floor? I'm counting on some women who are taking the floor. You may think that Women are well represented here on the podium, which is true, but it's hard to imagine that there are no questions, no suggestions. No. <laughs> <laughs> sir, He's got sir, okay. you have the floor. Thank you. I'm a representative of Iceland, and I knew I was uh, giving you trouble. You wouldn't like to say no to me. Uh, I'd like to uh, follow up on, on, on really what my <coughs> questions so far have been or, or comments, and that's on the, uh, what's coming uh, with the Agenda 2030. It's true, uh, and I, I, it's a more of a follow-up of a question from uh, the Ambassador for Germany, but can you guess for us, with your experience, because of the universality of the Agenda 2030, how will it change CFS? It is a, a, a reality that we have looked at CFS more towards the uh, vulnerable world where the problems are. But now we have an agenda for everyone. Thank you. Okay. Um, in my right ear, I heard already the secretary starting to answer the question, so why don't I give her the floor first, and then if I think that I can add something, um, I will feel free. But let us start with you, Deborah. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I might just start with that last one first, because I, I had a bit of a reaction to that. Uh, uh, I, well, the the issues around the importance of the 2030 agenda in general. I think the comments that we're hearing here are very important and very useful. And I think the you know in the plenary week itself, there is this uh, part of the discussion on CFS and the SDGs, where it is a chance for the plenary to give its initial direction and feedback on the exactly these issues that will then be almost like the initial briefing for the open-ended working group that's going to come up with a more detailed proposal for CFS work. So I very much hope that you will use the plenary to, to feed some of your ideas and ambitions and expectations for CFS because that will be good for the open-ended working group to, to hear. I think on the, the way that it will change, I mean, we, we said in our presentation it's really a turning point for CFS. On the one hand, I think CFS really always has been universal. The, the policy recommendations that it takes on are endorsed by member countries and therefore everybody to think about you know, within their uh, competencies and the like. So, the, for example, the, uh, the guidelines on tenure, it, it's not only developing countries that think about the way they apply, other countries think about these as well. So there's, there's different elements that come to the fore in discussions, but in fact, I think I was, it uh, might have even been when I was in Brussels with you, Chair, there was a discussion about some of the challenges around tenure going on in Europe. So in, in one way, CFS does see itself as, as universal and, and it will reflect further, I think, on what this means in the 2030 agenda, but it's, it's, it's not 100% new to it. Uh, I uh, might leave you to talk on Expo. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Deborah. Um, well, I, the, 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 the points that were brought to the table by the French ambassador um, we can embrace, um, but it is not easy. We all know that the challenges uh, uh, 
uh, today, for today and, 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 and tomorrow, the projected crisis um, um, and, and, the, and the possible support of their own based uh, agencies. And when it comes to uh, migrants or refugees, uh, we all know that, uh, that WFP is doing an extremely uh, good job. Uh, but where we can, uh, we should contribute. And I think our framework for action for food security and nutrition in protracted crisis, although it took us uh, quite a while to agree because it took us uh, about two years of, uh, ne for, uh, for, to, for negotiations, but um, it is more than time to come forward with such an uh, agenda, at least to bring uh, people around the table. And um, um, at, a, at a certain moment, somebody said, well, uh, topics like uh, food uh, security and nutrition should also be dealt with in the Security Council, because this is also a matter of, um, of how to build peace. Well, I, I, I cannot disagree. I do not disagree. At the same time, um, it is um, emphasizing, uh, emphasizing how difficult and complicated these things are. Uh, in my introductory remarks, I said, um, I said something about the interlinkage between peace, sustainable peace, and sustainable uh, food uh, security. Well, um, it's not one uh, to one, but we all uh, are aware that sustainable fee, uh, peace only can be reached um, if there is sustainable food security and nutrition. And building food security and nutrition is contributing, but it's not only it's not the only factor. There are so many diff different uh, factors. What I learned during my holidays, I was reading a book. It's very surprising, of course, to read a book during your uh, holidays. But I uh, read in one book um, a, a sentence that that struck me and that made me uh, thinking. Um, between uh, civilization and uh, and social unrest, there are only seven meals. There are only seven meals between civil civilized behavior and social unrest and the, st the stabilization. Well, of course, it was, a, was explained, but if um, well, we are used to eat several times, and we are quite uh, food secure as we are in this uh, in this room here. But if for more than two days, three days, there's nothing to eat, and probably very few to drink or nothing to drink, what would you do for you and your family? So that's something that um, made crystal clear that this world is. Um, it's a complicated world we know already, but um, it's, it's very f fragile. We try to support and to do as much as possible um, outreach, recognitions, bringing people uh, together, but especially, let me, let me say this, to react also to, the, to the, the re one of the remarks, the remarks of, the, of the French ambassador. It is of extreme importance to um, be an advocate for the products and results of uh, CFS. All of us, as we are here, um, secretariat, the chair has to do outreach, but it's, it's, it are our products, um, it is our work, it's our contribution. And let us try to promote and communicate through our own uh, governments, through our own constituencies, within our own network, so that let's say, the voluntary guidelines, the right principles, but also the framework uh, for action, um, that they uh, are taken to uh, grassroots level, to the appropriate level, in order to be uh, um, made applicable and to be implemented. Because if it just stick, stick to, the, to uh, uh, let's say, endorsement, and it is one more report on the pile of reports, uh, and agreements uh, that there are already, then it's doing nothing for people in reality. So let us also be innovative and um, adding value in taking um, uh, consensus or taking products from 
global level to regional country level, but especially to make them available at grassroots level in order to be implemented and to really uh, contribute to a better, to an improvement of the life of so many people. Okay, long answer, not uh, in detail on all your topics, but it's your uh, remarks were also reflections and we agree. Who else? Dr. Yes, Dr. Ayazi and I see two women raising their hands. Thank you, you Madam it. Chair. Yes. Madam Chair, just a few remarks after what we heard from our colleagues. First, CFS is not the Security Council. CFS cannot solve the problem of the migrants. And there is a, a misconception. The people of the Near East are running towards Europe, not because they are hungry. No. no. Hunger is not the cause. It's political crisis. That's the cause. So be modest in, uh, in the statement of CFS can do everything. My second comment is with respect to the SDGs. I think once on the 27th of September, the summit passes the outcome document, it is up to the Rome-based agencies to think what they can do to adjust their work according to the goals and targets and the indicators. There are 169 targets. We still do not know how many are really related to the Rome-based agencies. In my calculation, only 36, but the other may say 56. So this is for the Rome agency to do their homework. And I'm glad that the WFA has already started it. This afternoon, we will have a seminar in FAO by the Director General of FAO on SDGs. So before CFS can say this has to be done, the Rome-based agencies, which are partners, main partners of CFS, has to come up something. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, um, I agree with you, but um, the, the, the CFS will not be dealt with in the Security Council, um, and CFS should be modest. Um, I agree. At the same time, we should be um, proud, and we should work to um, uh, get our products uh, disseminated uh, to uh, grassroots level. So, and on one hand, we cannot uh, change everything, um, but we should do our utmost to deliver our contribution. Um, and on the SDGs, uh, we will be there uh, later. I saw two hands. Um, the, um, yes, yeah. Yeah, Sudan and uh, the rep our representatives of our representative of WFP, Madam, you have the floor. Uh, Thank you very much, Mrs. Chair. I would first like to thank the uh, CFS. Uh, you have indeed been able to provide a lot uh, to our populations and our nations in the past. And I would like to return to uh, something that uh, the Secretary said about, about the budget in the future. I believe, Madam, that you have mentioned the issue. There is a deficit in the CFS budget for the future, and so far nothing has been done about it, and we have not focused on the issue so far. So my question is the, fo the following. When will the issue be discussed? Are we going to discuss the matter at any given level in order for us to find uh, a new mechanism? Perhaps we would need a new mechanism, a new more, um, more sustainable mechanism of financing in the future instead of relying exclusively on, on, uh, on donations. I believe in the, within the consultative group we, ha we have mentioned the issue. 
there were countries that used to uh, give donations in the past, but the usual donors, unfortunately, this year don't seem interested in providing any new donations for the future. But considering the lack of sustainability, the question is, what are we to do in the future? And are there any attempts to find a solution to the problem? The future worries me because a deficit in the CFS budget would lead to the end of CFS itself. If we do not have enough money to support ourselves, then all our projects would go down the drain. And therefore, we all acknowledge the work of CFS and we all see how important uh, this uh, committee is for all of us and for the world. But when it come, when it boils down to uh, the nitty gritty, it is also about money and we need money if we are to have this major role in the future. What are we doing about it and what sustainable measures are we taking? Thank you. Thank you, Sudan. Uh, WFP, madam, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, very happy to have you here today, and then thank you very much for the great presentation. Um, and also welcome uh, to all uh, for uh, coming here, and it's really great to have you all here. Um, I just have a question to the chair. You mentioned about uh, reaching out to regions and then also countries. Since we are connected to um, colleagues at country and regional levels, do you have any sort of questions or maybe uh, request to our colleagues um, as to how to help you in reaching out to regions and countries? Thank you very much uh, for your contributions. Um, let me uh, start to answer and then uh, I give the floor to the secretary to uh, add, um, to have a full uh, answer. Um, when it comes to the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals or the implementation of Agenda 2030, I agree with uh, what was stated by the representatives of Afghan representative of Afghanistan. All three Rome-based agencies are working uh, on this and they are um, recognizing more and more that uh, cooperation and collaboration with CFS, also when it comes to, um, to, to implementation, but also to do stock taking or to do the measurement, where are we and how can we take the agenda forward and how can we really reach the, um, the huge ambitions without leaving anyone uh, behind. Um, so it is work in, uh, in, in, in progress and I have the impression that they are doing well and also the connection with CFS is, uh, is, is there. And as has been said already by the Secretary, um, it will be the, 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 ex the um, uh, precise connection and the mechanism that uh, CFS will, be, will develop to add as much as possible uh, value to the to the whole process will be discussed in the open-ended working group on the sustainable development goals. Probably we should uh, re uh, uh, call it we we should rename it, um, but that's a decision that can be taken uh, later. Um, so this is um, this is important. Uh, we are on board, and the recognition of uh, doing doing it in in a multi-stakeholder way, uh, and also bringing stakeholders to discuss. Uh, progress and to learn lessons and to do the naming and faming and if necessary to do the naming and shaming um, is also uh, is also higher in the awareness. On the uh, question of Sudan, uh, finances are important, uh, but um, I think you were there when we discussed uh, this topic in the in the joint meeting, last meeting of the um, advisory group and the bureau, and we had an even more in-depth discussion during last bureau. So we are paying attention, we are paying a lot of attention. I think um, the awareness is there, um, and we are really hopeful hopeful uh, that uh, countries, um, but also uh, let's say foundations and other institutions are considering to step up and to support uh, CFS activities. 
and um, no one is excluded. Everybody is everyone, uh, and every institution is uh, who is uh, interested and, and connected to the work, committed to the work of CFS, is uh, requested and invited to consider uh, concrete contributions uh, uh, for funding. If there is a desire to, um, uh, or the need to rethink the financial system, um, it's, I'm quite sure that it will be on the, on the agenda of uh, the next um, joint uh, meeting of the advisory group and the bureau, it can be on the agenda. But it's learning, our, it's learning us two things. First is to, um, to combine the uh, amount of work we can load on the CFS shoulder with uh, a profound and, 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 and profound and, and sustainable funding. That's one. Um, and uh, secondly, um, it is um, it, 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 CFS needs to focus on the concrete added value and the specific uh, position of uh, CFS. Uh, it's not, it's not uh, let's say, automatically that, uh, that there will be, uh, will be funding, but in the combination, we should, uh, we should we, well, we, I think we are making uh, progress in, uh, in developing a system. At least we are, um, we are transparent. Everybody now knows exactly what is, uh, what is going on and what the costs uh, uh, are, but it has to be taken forward uh, uh, in the, by the next uh, bureau, and it has to be... Um, recognized by the plenary. And let me underscore what I have said during one of these uh, meetings. If there are representatives or representations or delegations in the plenary who would like to announce yes. their commitment to one of the topics and uh, um, their commitment also to contribute in a financial way to one of the topics of the uh, MIPO, MIPO, please feel free. And as chair, I may consider to give you a little bit more time if you need to make that announcement. <laughs> you never know. Okay. Um, and WFP, um, yes. Um, how to how to also connect with the with the the people from the Rome-based agencies in the region and the countries. Well, let me thank you for um, for doing already a great job. Uh, the CFS Secretariat were, was able to organize um, a, a, a meeting, uh, a, a meeting to elaborate on the on the on the work of CFS with your regional and country uh, officers and the regional country officers of uh, of FAO, which was a great help because it was um, it was that it was a huge opportunity to build networks to become interconnected and interrelated, and also at country level to consider the. CFS products and to give input also from country and region uh, level. The Secretary is, is considering to have from time to time a newsletter to inform them, but um, I'm quite sure that um, we're always open to have their uh, contributions uh, from grassroots and um, the Secretary, secretary um, we are always thinking of how to, uh, how to uh, broaden this, uh, this network. But it's work in progress, and we are extremely uh, glad that uh, the WFP and the, and the FAO uh, regional officers were able to, to participate. And next time, we are hopeful that also the IFET uh, officers will uh, participate in these kind of events. Extremely important. Right. Okay. Looking at the... Ah. Who else would like to take the floor? Who would like to... Who would walk out this room? Uh, in a disappointed mood when he or she did not take the floor. Last round of questions or suggestions from the floor, and then we go to another important uh, topic on our agenda. Also the final uh, part, which is the, uh, on the registration and logistics. Oh, you did it. You, you covered it already. Yes. Yeah, okay. Very good. We have more room. Um, Sir, you have the floor. Thanks, Chair. Um, well, l let me start to compliment uh, CFS of uh, you know what you have accomplished over the last two years, but particularly also the new focus on nutrition or the stronger focus on nutrition. Um, but you know, actually, I have a question for 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 the chair. Um, 
you know, you could see that we have the new, uh, you know, sustainable development goals. Uh, it's already mentioned that we have to work together with all the different fields, health, uh, looking at climate change. And you see, CFS has always focused on the value chain, you know, going from production to the consumer. So my question to you is, particularly focusing on nutrition, do you think there is a good balance between production and eventually looking at the consumers? Particularly if we know that the new, you know, the, the SDGs are actually universal. So do you feel that maybe there's more room in the future to focus more on consumers? Particularly when I look at the youth or young people, you know, there's a lot of emphasis, of course, on young farmers. But we know that Africa, for example, have like almost the majority of people will be very young. And they are not only farmers, they're also consumers. So how do you see the future for CFS dealing with consumers? Good question. By the way, he's the nutritionist uh, from WFP. You may know him, and he's also a fellow Dutchman. So he uh, apparently is thinking, let me make it a little bit difficult for the CFS uh, chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Bloom. You succeeded in this. Um, because um, I, I, will, I will answer this question in general, because of course there is uh, more room for a more balanced uh, approach. And I couldn't agree more that we should not only focus on one part of the whole chain, but what we need is, a, is, a, is an overall an inclusive and holistic uh, uh, approach. And when we are discussing nutrition, it's not anymore any longer only uh, undernutrition. It's at the same time we have to recognize that overnutrition or obesity and all related, related um, uh, 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 problems and diseases uh, should be t taken into account now. This is in the agenda, uh, in, the, in the outcome of the, of the ICN 2, it's in the Rome Declara Declaration, it is in the Plan of Action, and it's covered in, a, in general in the Sustainable Development uh, Goals. Sustainable Development Goals have to, is, is, are, are, have to be um, uh, Im implemented at country level, it's not one size fits all. So yesterday I heard that uh, some organizations were critical about a lack uh, of uh, specific attention on the nutrition, the topic, and I said, well, I can understand at the same time, you cannot cover everything because having 70 goals, it's impossible to touch on every uh, detail, but at the same time, the main topics uh, are there, the uh, coherence between the sustainable development goals uh, are there, their uh, responsibility uh, for countries, uh, could it be in a multi-stakeholder uh, way, uh, is to make them applicable and to uh, implement them, and uh, that is exactly the field where the CFS uh, would like to uh, play a role, and the specific way on the how we take this, this on board together with the Rome-based agencies and other um, um, stakeholders um, will be defined, will be sorted out in the open-ended working group on nutrition. So that for CFS uh, 43, there is a very concrete uh, and sound uh, proposal how uh, CFS can add value to this uh, agenda point, not only for one year, for one moment, one event, but in the years uh, uh, to come, because it will be a continuum. And there, Mr. Bloom, we also count on WFP a lot. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, who, is there somebody who'd like to take the floor? Um, on my agenda, but I was already corrected by the secretary, which is from time to time necessary. There is a last part in the agenda, which is a registration and logistic and the seating plan. And the secretary is right. She already elaborated on this. So looking around, is everything crystal clear to you? If this is the case, I thank you very much. I hope that you can use the... Um, 50 minutes before 12 o'clock for some networking or so for some informals. And um, this afternoon, um, there will be a an, 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 an briefing from FAO on uh, World Food Day. Um, if um, you can get some clearance 
on uh, clarity on the role of CFS during the celebration of World Food Day, that would be great. We have uh, shortened our CFS meeting specifically for this reason with one day. We, will, we hope to manage uh, it, and uh, we count on you as well. But if um, it would be clear what could be the role of CFS during the celebration, then it would be great. Thank you for joining us, also for the people outside this room who were with us through um, modern um, information and communication technology. Thank you very much for your contribution, your attention. We count on you. Hope to see you at CFS 42 or earlier. This meeting is closed. <laughs>